for those who are not on the word of knowledge in Greek knowledge is a gnosis and it means knowing the word is a logo and it means a plan reason or word so it is really the plan or reason to know something word of knowledge by means of explanation is a supernatural revelation of facts or details specific details from the mind of God concerning the past present or future through whatever revelation or channel that God uses to speak to us so understand this by the spirit that the gift of word of knowledge is not research into a particular topic or person word of knowledge is not getting information from Google word of knowledge is not going on to someone's Facebook or you know social media page to see what they're into what their photos are saying no that is not word of knowledge my friend that is you spy out someone's life so you can minister to them word of knowledge is divine information that is only downloaded into your spirit by means of the Spirit of God so it is revelation given to you by the Spirit of God that you would not have known prior. So there's no way that you would have possibly known the information that the Spirit of God would reveal to you through means of word of knowledge. So the purpose of word of knowledge really is to... The purpose of word of knowledge is really to draw people closer to God. It's really to help persons to be drawn closer to God, to have a more increased level of faith and belief in the things of God, and to know that God knows about their situation and also wants to do something about the situation. So that is the purpose for word of knowledge. Word of knowledge truly only reveals known information about the person. This means once you have given certain facts, information or specific details concerning the individual or the recipient's life they will uh, I don't want to see a hundred percent but most of the times they will confirm that the information that you have spoken or given is actually factual because they already know about it so for example for example, if you tell someone that oh by the realm of the spirit I'm seeing where I'm seeing where you had um pancakes and you know sausage and scrambled eggs and bacons for breakfast and after you had that you had a stomach issue you had to go to the doctor and the doctor said it was gastroenteritis the person then begins to hear and they will say it's true it's true that is correct that is correct in fact in many cases what you will more frequently hear or most frequently hear is when you give correct details or insight into something <coughs> I don't know if someone has their microphone on. Um, can you mute until we're asking questions? So in most cases, you will find that when you give specific details to someone concerning their lives, they will most times say, prophesy, prophesy is true. We must understand that we must understand that word of knowledge is a revelatory gift, which also makes it a prophetic gift. Having a prophetic revelatory gift does not mean that one is called to be a prophet. If you are a prophet, it is very likely and very, very possible that you will operate within any if not all the gifts which also include which also includes the gift of word of knowledge so once you're a prophet you're gonna operate in the gift of word of knowledge but as a minister a pastor a Christian it is a gift that God gives to us the gift of word of knowledge through operating in the gift of word of knowledge you can know something you can feel something you can sense something or you can have an actual impression about something the fact that this is a gift gift one that operates in the gift of word of knowledge doesn't even need to be a Christian to be able to operate in this gifting remember now that Romans 11 29 says for the gifts and callings of God are given to us without repentance that means if y'all say you're not about this church thing anymore because you've been too hurt, you don't want to serve God, you're not about serving God anymore, he does not take that gift away from you. So you're still left with the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of word of knowledge, which means that you will then be able to tell someone what their name is, what their telephone number is, because this is what the gift of word of knowledge does. It is able to give a specific information concerning someone's... <clears throat> 
someone's name so when you hear prophetic person saying um that person over there your name is marina come i want to prophesy to you 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 have four brothers and by the way your mother is miss brown and so and so and so you drove this particular car here and your your account number the last four digits of your account number social security is 2464 and they say yes it's true it's true prophesy that's not a prophecy that's word of knowledge the issue we have concerning the prophetic is there are too many persons who have taken onto themselves a prophetic title because consistently they have operated in the gift of word of knowledge and persons have continuously said prophesy, prophesy. So when one person has been given specific information over a period of time and persons constantly say prophesy, they begin to feel as though I am very accurate and precise and people are always saying prophesy and it's true then I'm called to be a prophet and then what happens is they take on a prophetic title even though they're not called to be a prophet they are prophetic by gifting by ministration but they're not called to be a prophet and then this results in a lot of dysfunction and chaos in the sphere of ministry so word of knowledge is what causes uh, many prophets to be accurate and precise. Uh, there are many great prophets that I know that rarely prophesy. In fact, the most of what they do, their more dominant functionality or gift is word of knowledge. So if you're accurate with calling names and gifts, you're very gifted. That's all it is. If you have never learned how to activate, how to stretch, how to deepen, how to truly grow in that gift of word of knowledge, then you're only, you, you really just have a gift just like any of us. People who are not Christians were given the gift of word of knowledge. A gift is a gift. You did nothing to receive it. You did not pay the price for it. You did nothing to deserve it. You did nothing to gain it. It was just a gift that God has given to all of us. Even psychics and warlocks have gift of word of knowledge and God doesn't take it away from them and they can still use it. Sad to say. How do you think a psychic can tell you I see four siblings. Do you have four sisters? God has done given them the gift of word of knowledge. They be knowing stuff. The only thing is they have not submitted that gifting back to God. So you can't really entrust everything that they're saying, but they be correct. This is why we do not judge prophecy by accuracy and precision. I do not care how accurate you are, how precise you are. That's not what we use to judge prophecy. We're using the fruits of the person and we're using the source from which this information is coming from to judge whether I should receive this prophetic word or I should receive you as a prophet or not. So word of knowledge then is only really, word of knowledge really just reveals information about a person's past, present, or future. Word, and this is most times known to the individual. I say most times known to the individual because I've seen where many times I've given a word of knowledge, especially about someone's past and even present that they know no information of. For example, this one woman came to me um, a few years ago and she said, woman of God, I've been married for years and I, I have no baby. I really want to be pregnant. I've tried everything. The doctor says I have fibroids. I can't get pregnant. And I'm looking at her in utter confusion and I'm saying, but you're pregnant. And she says, I received by the spirit of God. I said, no, calm down. You're truly pregnant. I see two. As a matter of fact, I see two babies. I don't know if you're going to have two kids in the future or over time but I see two babies and she said that's not even remotely possible I have fibroids I can't get pregnant I've tried for years I say woman give just give me some dinner because back then I was broke I was hungry and I would go to her house I was in Bible college I would go to her house on Sundays to get dinner and I said just give me my dinner and then go and make an appointment and see the doctor and let me know she comes back totally frantic crazy I'm pregnant with twins there's no way that's possible and then she explains, no wonder why I've been feeling this kind of way for the past couple of weeks. She's been pregnant all along and she didn't know. So sometimes also a word of knowledge can reveal something about someone's past. There was a young girl that came to church and I was ministering to her. And I said to her, 
I said, um, young woman, the reason why you're struggling the way that you're struggling, because there's a, there's a particular person in your family. His name is, I said something like his name. I gave him some word name. I don't remember. I gave her some word name, what his name was. Uh, I said, he did something to you when you were smaller. And this has altered your life and your destiny. And this is why you're struggling the way that you're struggling and she says to me prophetess i know every family member we're very we're very close knitted family my family and i are very close i have no one in my family by that name and she looks at me and she says i don't know what you're talking about and the people of my church are looking at me like okay um prophetess is losing it she's not gifted or anointed anymore this girl is saying she knows nothing what you're talking about so you're either making something up or something is off i say okay no problem it will make sense to you soon she goes home and my phone rings throughout the week and she says to me um prophetess i'm just calling to share something with you quickly you prophesied to me on sunday no she said i prophesied to her i did not prophesy i gave her word of knowledge because persons do not know the difference between the giftings and ministration so she says i was just having a conversation with my mom and she mentioned a name and i said wait a second who is that and she said my mom said when my uncle was when we were younger that's what they used to call my uncle but we all grew up no one calls him by that name anymore because he does not like that pet name but that was his name so then i figured out exactly who you were talking about i said okay no problem may the lord bless you because you already made me look like a whole fool you said i didn't know what i was talking about anyways <laughs> yeah so then it made sense to her later so sometimes word of knowledge will reveal the present the past or even the future you know <coughs> i was pregnant and <clears throat> I say to my husband, there was a shop that was like two minutes walk from my house. And I say to my husband, can you go and get a, a pain tablet for me? Because I'm in very bad pain. And he gets ready. He says, no problem. I'm going to the shop. I'll be back. I'll be back soon. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, the shop is two minutes away from the house. You can literally pull, pull a slipper on, a shorts on, and just whatever shirt. Why are you getting dressed to go get me two panadols from the shop? And why are you telling me you'll be back soon? Like, legitly, you could just run and be back in three minutes. And I'm looking at this man getting dressed, getting cute and looking nice, putting on perfume and stuff. And I'm thinking, if this nigga think he's going to cheat on me, something is wrong. He says, I'm going downtown to get a pill. Downtown is like a, a five minute, ten minute drive. Why are you going downtown to get a Panadol and there's a shop like two minutes away? I'm sorry, I repent. So he goes downtown. And he's taking forever and I'm in pain. I call this guy. He does not answer me. I go to sleep because he's not coming back. I'm in pain. I need to sleep this off. I go to sleep. Tell me why I'm having a dream that my husband is buying a car because we never had a car. I'm sleeping. The house phone rings. I answer. He's on the line. Babe, I'm totally excited. Babe, guess what? I said, you bought a car? He's like... That's why I'm not like the knock nor surprise you. In, in Jamaican, he says, that's why I don't like to surprise you because, you know, I, I went to surprise and he bought your car. I saw someone posted a car. I wanted to just go get it. Come surprise you. You're pregnant. We don't have to take the taxi anymore. I just answered the phone. You bought a car. He hisses his teeth. How did you know that? Can you let me surprise you for God's name? I say to him... I'm still half asleep, half awake, you know. And I say to him, I just dreamt that you were calling me to tell me you bought a car. I can't help it. <laughs> I never I never did engagement with my marriage. We just set a date and got married. Maybe the man of God thought it wasn't even necessary to propose to this one because she's going to know. Do you know how I met my husband? Word of knowledge is very simple. So I'm in a car and 
there were two women. I was 23 years old. All my life I've said, I want to get married by 23, start my family at 23. I want to be a pastor all my life from six years old. So I'm in a car with two women who are in their early 30s, mid 30s, and they're saying, you know, we're getting old. We want to get married. We want to start our ministry and families and so on. I'm a young prophetess. I was so sharp. And they said, you know, pray and prophesy to us so we can get married. So I prophesy to Shima and I say, somebody in this car one of you women in this car you're gonna meet a man and his name is going to be philip when you meet this man ask him if his name is philip is philip and if he says yes that's your husband so my husband's shop was right next to the car i get out of the car go to the shop get a snack he's been bugging me for weeks can i take you on a date except this guy claims to be a christian but i'm not so sure if he's really a christian christian so i'm not going not with him so he says just one day so i'm like okay fine whatever i'll go that was i think the tuesday or the wednesday i go on my first day with my husband the thursday i'm in the park with him i'm here in philip i say to him by any chance is your name philip he says why would you ask me that why are you asking me that question i'm like sir you're either gonna answer the question or you're not gonna answer the question i suggest you answer it's our first date make it count if you want a second one he says my middle name is philip i say okay you're my husband So for weeks and months, I've been telling this guy, you're going to marry me whether you like it or not. You're my husband. They say when you find a, when you find a good wife, you found a good thing. I guess I found a good man and I found a good one. I say, you're going to be my husband. I heard the name Phillips. I didn't even second guess it. I just knew you were my husband. The man never proposed to me. Someone, please, if Tashima, when you see my husband, tell him to propose. I still need a proposal. So that's word of knowledge. It gives you specific details into, into, into stuff. No, if, if word of knowledge gives you specific details about things so you can know that God is truly there, in most cases, word of knowledge is tied to other gifts. So why would God just want you to know something about, why would God just want you to know? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Mommy, mm -hmm. daddy, you're not giving me of what? I'll soon come, baby. Give me five minutes and I'll come and give you. So, word of knowledge reveals a sickness and certain situations that someone may be going through. So, that way they can know and have faith to know that God knows about the situation. But that's not just how it works. Because word of knowledge does does not just reveal known information because why would God just tell me to tell someone that I see the spirit of cancer, I see sickness, I see death, I see a door opening, but there's an enemy there, whatever it is. It doesn't just confirm information because I do believe, and I've said very often, that if someone reveals something without saying what God's intention is concerning that issue, that is borderline spiritual witchcraft <coughs> never allow someone to speak over you or to confirm a sickness concern in your life or to confirm any issue or demise concerning sickness death or anything that would alter your destiny without canceling it or whatever it is I believe if someone has spoken something that they never have, they, and they haven't gone ahead to pray to cancel or deal with it or give you instructions on how to deal with it, they're confirming something in your life. And that that could be spiritual witchcraft. Yes? Whatever, whatever God reveals, he intends to heal. This is why the gift of word of knowledge is always tied to healing. Is always tied to deliverance, is always tied to a prophetic word, or a word of knowledge is always tied into the gift of word of wisdom. So when God has given you wisdom concerning a thing, uh, giving you knowledge rather concerning a thing, then you will find in many cases that the gift of word of wisdom will, will be tied to it to complement what the word of knowledge is saying. If a word of knowledge has gone forth that someone is sick and dealing with a serious illness, then the gift of healing should be tied to it because God has revealed the sickness because he wants to heal or he has revealed the sickness because he wants to deliver or he wants to give you wisdom on how to deal with that particular issue
So an example of this would be in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing where you have gone to the doctors and the doctor said that there was you had some fibroids or some issue that was there. The person said, yes, it's true. It's true. Prophesy. Then you, that's word of knowledge. The person has confirmed that's exactly what's happening. So then, but now the spirit of God wants to bring you healing. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing where these fibers and this issue came in. When you were 16, you were raped and a door was open. So sickness came. So God is delivering you from that spirit as, that is causing you sickness. Now that you are delivered, I declare that you're healed. And now that God has brought you complete healing, I prophesy that the ministry and the gift of healing is coming on your hands so everyone else that struggles with this sickness god will use you to bring them healing so word of knowledge is usually accompanied by another gift whether prophecy healing or the gift of word of uh wisdom so i'll give you the reasons why god has given us the gift of word of knowledge and just some examples of how the word of knowledge actually operates so you have a clear understanding what the gift is and how to actually use your gifting somebody says you meet your husband that's that's really awesome don't go to people now and tell them you're my husband <laughs> So the word of knowledge helps us to give a sudden solution to particular problems that you are trying to solve, whether work, school, or whatever it is. Word of knowledge helps to bring sudden um, solutions to problems. For example, uh, the Bible shares um, the account of uh, Saul. Kish sends Saul to go and find the asses or the donkeys that have been lost. Saul goes to Samuel. When Saul meets Samuel, the Bible said that obviously Samuel had a word of knowledge concerning this. So before Saul says anything to Samuel, Samuel says, before you even say anything, I know where your asses are. We have found them and tied them around the back. Now I want you to come and sit and eat. I want to give you a prophetic word from the Lord you're about to be king so the word of knowledge has solved a problem so for those of you who are working in you know corporate you're working or you're operating in ministry whatever it is the gift of word of knowledge is given to you to solve problems this means if your boss has an issue they can't figure it out they can't solve it the spirit of god wants to download this hidden secret to you so you can go and you can fix this issue Imagine, imagine having a husband like my husband. My husband can never find anything. He will have his phone in his hand and he doesn't know where his phone is. The man can't find stuff. So imagine even being in a dream and your, your husband, your child, someone comes to you and say, I can't find my keys. I'm super late for work. I can't be late for work because I'm going to lose my job. And you say to the person, it is in the pants that you were yesterday in the washing machine. Go and take it. And the person goes and find it literally right there. So word of knowledge solves a problem. It gives a specific solution to problems at your place of employment, um, in your school or whatever it is. It helps to find misplaced stuff. So anything that has been misplaced, just like Saul's asses that he could not find, the gift of word of knowledge brings a solution to things that have been misplaced. It brings light to specific situations concerning the past, present, or future. It helps, you know, women to identify why can't I get married because something has happened in the past that has created an open door and it is not blocking, you know, me from finding my spouse or, you know, my spouse or someone really committing to a relationship. So it sheds light on things that have been uncertain and confusing in our lives. It reveals the past issues in someone's life that brings them into complete freedom when they hear the truth of, a, of the particular situation. It helps to solve disputes between others. If you study the story of Solomon concerning the two mothers, the gift of word of knowledge helped to solve that particular issue. It helps to bring clarity concerning career paths. Had a student today, I'm not sure if she's on. Had a student today, it was my second time meeting with her. And I say to her, 
I'm seeing counseling. Why do I keep seeing and I keep seeing you as a counselor? Are you a counselor? She said, no. Do you want to be a counselor? No. So I'm still baffled and I'm thinking, why does this angel keep showing me as a, her as a counselor? And I said, what is counseling to you? And she says, I, I was studying counseling. I was just about finished when someone from me died. My father died. I had to quit for so-and-so and so reason. So I say, okay, now I understand. And I go deeper. The counselor that I'm seeing is not just a counselor or a psychologist, which is what she was actually studying. Imagine if I had said, okay, no problem. It would have just seemed as though I didn't know what I was talking about. But to her, it made sense. But I continued to probe the situation. And she said, I was studying to be a counselor. And just when I was about finished, I stopped at the last, last mark. So, so she, so I say to her, have you ever thought about running as a senator? She laughs and she said, yes, that's exactly what she wants to do. To do. So I see her not just as a counselor, a psychologist, but I see her running for senator as a counselor and just some other stuff. And it continues. When you see something concerning someone's life, sometimes they may not be sure, they may not be certain until you, they may not be certain what they want to do, what they're trying to achieve until you say something to bring confirmation. So she did not continue to study because she wasn't sure that's what she wanted to do or what, you know, God wanted her to do. She said, my husband has been pushing me, go and do counseling. So the fact that I now say that, you know, um, that confirms to her. So as you, for most of you who are prophetic I've, I've seen a lot of times where many persons who are called to be prophets who are prophetic have constant have constantly said I don't see God using me in the prophetic yes baby mommy soon give it to you Go. guys give me one second please Sorry about that, guys. Right, so I was saying, what was I saying? <laughs> so I was saying that, um, <clears throat> what's the last thing I said? Let's see if anyone is talking. Yes, the prophetic. Thank you. So a lot of times people have said that I'm called to be a prophet, but I'm not prophesying. I'm not seeing God use me. When you're called to be a prophet, you operate in the prophetic, which means that there are many different ways in which God can use you. And one of these ways or functionalities is in the gift of word of knowledge. The gift of word of knowledge, it reveals known information. But the Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part, which means that sometimes God may just give you just a small fraction of, you know, details concerning in someone's life and the moment you say exactly what you have seen the person has confirmed what you have seen or heard then he continues to give you information on how to move forward let's look at samuel for example uh, samuel is going to prophesy or anoint to someone that god says to samuel how long will you mourn over whom i have rejected which is saul so he says i'm sending you to anoint someone that will take the place of saul to be king over israel he goes to jesse and he sees all of Jesse's sons. Then he says to Jesse, do you have another son? Imagine me being a senior, tenure prophet that counsels saw, that counsels kings. And I'm coming to you to ask you if you have another son. If I should put myself in Jesse's position, I would probably say to Samuel, aren't you a prophet? Aren't you supposed to know if I have another son? 
if I were in Samuel's um, position, actually, I probably would have said to God, okay, so first of all, if you're sending me to anoint someone that's going to be king, you know, give me something to work with. Give me a name, you know, give me details. Give me something to work with. God says, okay, no problem. What I want you to know is just know that I'm, I'm, I'm not looking... I'm, I'm, I'm not looking on the yacht with the parents. I'm looking on the heart. That was the only information that God gave to Samuel. So sometimes as you come into the prophetic, it's just a small fraction of information that God will give you. I go to preach at this church and um, I hear the name Shanique. <clears throat> Mark, no, so I'm, my name is Shanique. I'm preaching and I'm, I'm doing ministry and I hear God keep calling Shanique, Shanique, Shanique. So... I'm like, okay, God, are you calling my name? Are you saying something to me? So I just randomly say, is there anyone here with the name Shanique? Upon saying that two persons come to the pulpit and I'm thinking, okay, Holy Spirit, you're messing with me. So you give me the name Shanique. There are two Shaniques here. How do I know which one to minister to? Then I hear Brown. So I tell the two persons, stand here because y'all are here and I don't know what I'm about to say to you. I just know I heard the name Shanique. In fact, I'm not even sure that God was telling me to call you guys or he was calling my name. So I say, stand here just for a minute. I go back to the congregation. Is there any one here with the last name Brown. One of the females whose name was Shanik say, my last name is Brown. So I'm like, okay, so you're the one God wants, Shanik Brown. I end up being able to minister to her from just that small, you know, word of knowledge. So as you grow in word of knowledge, you have to learn to say exactly what it is that God is communicating to you. And once the person hears, it makes, it will make sense to that person. That's what we're going to exercise tonight. But just to give you a few more um, reasons for the gift of word of knowledge, a time or place can be given to actually find someone who is in trouble or who may be um, who may get in trouble. So, for example, we're in a country where you know people are being kidnapped, etc. This is how now we need prophetic vessels or persons that are operating in the gift of word of knowledge to be able to say that the person that is missing, you know, they have her in this particular community. She's in this house at this particular address go and find this person if some of y'all are praying and you keep seeing a particular house you keep getting a particular address you need to pray about it because god could literally be giving you the answer to someone that has been you know abducted or whatever it is word of knowledge it gives new innovative ideas to bring about something new or greater in the marketplace so the gift of word of knowledge and the anointing of God, it causes biasness, in, if I may use that word, which means if you're going to do a job interview for a certain promotion or you want to get a certain contract to do something, you know exactly what your manager needs. So you can go into that meeting and you can say exactly what they want because word of knowledge gives you insight. It gives you hindsight. It gives you oversight into things that no one else would have seen. The gift of of word of knowledge will give you oversight, insight, hindsight, and foresight into things that no one else would have seen. It gives you forensic details that causes you to look beyond the surface level so you're able to know things that no one else would have actually known. It brings counsel and comfort to persons who have a tragic um, or traumatic experience. Uh, the gift of word of knowledge, it gives instructions, it gives strategies for wealth increase, for ministry growth, and so on and so forth. It reveals the specific callings that God has placed on someone's life. Um, in Acts chapter 9, when the Lord told Ananias to go and find Saul, he told him exactly where Paul, where Saul was going to be. When Jesus met the woman that was at the well, the Samaritan woman, it was word of knowledge that he tapped into to know that, okay, you know, she has a husband or she has many husbands. So he, she knew everything about her life and this was through the gift of word of knowledge so this is something that we need to develop that god wants to use so we can minister and be a blessing to others as you grow in the prophetic you may not always have a, prof a prophecy for someone but if you can find a word of knowledge which may be a scripture sometimes it's just a, a scripture so as we're going to do this activity for the next say 30 minutes maybe 
I want you guys to try to tap into the gift of word of knowledge. So if you see someone's name or you see someone's face, you want to minister to them, per perhaps it's just a scripture that you get. And as you say that scripture, so let's say you say that um, the word of God says, David says, I've been young, no, I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You say that to someone, maybe that person needs to hear that because they haven't had anything to eat in the past two days. They need provision. They need help. So it could be a word or it could be a scripture it could be a song it could just be one word that you hear concerning someone's life and you just wait for them to confirm or say you know whatever it is as well as it could just be a prophecy whatever you see we're gonna exercise that gifting right so before we do that let's take let's take one minute I think I saw some questions um, there So let's take one minute. We're going to pray in the Holy Spirit for one minute. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, we're just going to steer ourselves prophetically. We're going to steer our spirits, steer our prophetic hearing and sight so we can receive revelation from the Holy Spirit and be able to minister to someone. So let's unmute for a minute and let's pray in the Holy Spirit for one minute. Let's steer ourselves. Come on, just play in the Holy Spirit. This is the gateway to your gifts. This is the gateway to your gifts. Pray. Zanda Kapala. La tosse vendes que prindo savai. Gende Kapala tosse avai. Zanda Rabaha. Zanda Rabaha. Zanda Rabaha. Come on, see yourself. See yourself. See yourself. Zakada la brandes Kapala. E pala prendes que bronzeva. Zante. Lebre Capando Rossi e Nada da Baia, la prenda sposia.